Hello, welcome to Fort Sumter and Fort Moultrie National Historic Park. My name is Ranger Gary Alexander. We're delighted to partner with our friends at Moores Creek National Battlefield as we observe the 245th anniversary of the American Revolution in North and South Carolina. News of the victory at the Battle of Moores Creek, Moores Creek Bridge at the end of February 1776 spread quickly. The very next month, in March, the colony of South Carolina declared its independence from Great Britain. An assembly was formed and selected prominent Charlestonian John Rutledge as president. Now, knowing this action could be, would be very provocative and could possibly provoke a British retaliation, President Rutledge directed local militia commander Colonel William Moultrie to prepare for and begin building defenses for Charleston Harbor. Colonel Moultrie and his men fanned out and began cutting down hundreds of palmetto trees on Sullivan's Island and around the harbor. They were rafted here to Sullivan's Island where we are today and construction began on the very first fort to stand on this site. Palmetto logs were actually a pretty good material to use because they were readily available, easy to work with, and in wartime, any incoming cannonballs could become easily lodged in the spongy walls of the fort. Back up in North Carolina, the British were beginning to rethink their plans to establish a base of operations in the Cape Fear area, late arrival of troops coming over from Ireland under the command of General Cornwallis, a fleet commanded by Admiral Peter Parker, connection with troops coming down from New York under General Henry Clinton. They arrived very, very scattered. Um, so when these commanders finally rendezvoused towards the end of May of 1776, it was decided that the Cape Fear area is just not the area to try to establish a base of operations. But they had heard of that the rebel defenses of Charleston when construction was underway, but they were far from completed. So a new plan was developed to advance upon Charleston. The British fleet weighed anchored at the end of May and appeared off of Charleston a day later. The first week in June, we see these 11 ships crossing the Charleston Bar, a series of sandbars about four miles outside of the harbor entrance and coming to anchor in an area called Five Fathom Hole. Within a short period of time, it was noted that the British were landing troops via small boat on the island above us, historically known as Long Island, but today known as Isle of Palms. So if you get to piece this British plan together, over 2,500 troops would be landed on Long Island. Their task would be to cross the water gap between the two islands, march down the island about three miles and attack the fort from the rear, whereas Admiral Parker ships would attack the fort from the front. However, the game changer would be Breach Inlet itself, the water gap between Long Island and Sullivan's Island. You know, back, back then it was 300 yards wide. Today, due to the reshaping of the island, it's only about 100 yards wide. But the whole British plan hinged on the ability of all these troops to wade across this inlet. Again, 300 yards wide. And they assumed that it was no deeper than knee deep water. On June 17th, British troops attempted all these men started to wade into the inlet and it got deeper and deeper. So either due to British overconfidence or faulty intelligence that they received, you could not 
wade across Breach Inlet. They turned around and the attempt to wade over to Sullivan's Island was thwarted. Of course, this was being noticed by the Patriots here and realizing that another crossing might be attempted, possibly by boat. Patriot reinforcements were rushed to the north end of the island and well dug in. Fortifications were established with artillery and 750 men under the command of a, another old local militia leader, Colonel William Thompson. So with the troops basically trapped on Long Island, the ability to cross over the inlet, now it was up to Admiral Parker to be the sole attacker of the fort. The original attack was planned on June 24th, but bad weather delayed it to June 28th. Colonel Moultrie is actually at Breach Inlet visiting with Colonel Thompson on the morning. At 9 a.m., he heard the boom of cannon offshore. Realizing that Admiral Parker is signaling to his fleet to advance upon the fort, he galloped at full speed back to the fort. And before too long, the fort and nine of Admiral Parker's ships began to exchange fire. The British seamen on board complimented the Americans on their slow, steady, and accurate rate of fire. During the day, three ships slipped into the harbor but again, luck was with the Patriots. They ran aground on a large sandbar about a mile south of the fort. Now, if those ships did not run aground, they would be able to fire on the fort from a parallel position. And remember, only the seacoast front of the fort had been completed. If those ships could have fired on the fort from the side, they would have scattered the guns. And again, Colonel Moultrie could not believe his luck. During the day, also, a well-placed British cannonball clipped the flagstaff and the great blue Moultrie flag came crashing to the ground. A member of the garrison, Sergeant William Jasper, rushed to re-raise the flag and he is remembered today for his gallant action of, in the face of enemy fire to re-raise the colors of the fort. The battle pretty much petered out by nightfall. And again, due to the accuracy and determined firing of the Patriot forces, we find that Admiral Parker's ships were heavily damaged and they were forced to retreat. Again, news of this great victory spread and a week later in Philadelphia the Declaration of Independence for the United States of America was signed on July 4th of 1776. So folks, we thank you for visiting with us today. We'd like to thank our friends at the Gibbs Museum of Art in Charleston for the gracious use of the image of Colonel William Thompson, which you have seen in this program. And we urge you to keep in tune with your Revolutionary War Parks as we approach the 250th anniversary of the American Revolution starting in 2025. Thank you very much. Have a great day.